Ladies and gentlemen, on the line, I have D.A. Smart, the Black Terror. How are you, man? I'm chilling like a bug on the ceiling. I don't know how yeah, you feel. Yes, sir. I'm doing great, man. Once again, dude, I appreciate you joining the program. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on the program. Most deaf, man. Um, I came across a vid video that you did back in the day uh, where you were walking through the Robert Taylor projects. What's up? As y'all can see, you are now in Vulture City. Is that where you grew up? Uh, yeah, that's where I grew up, Robert Taylor. Okay, yeah. okay. Tell us a little bit about the infamous Robert Taylor Homes. Wow. Um, well, it was probably one of the largest projects in Chicago. Um, it extended from 53rd all the way from 35th. Um, it was 16 stories high and 12 units on each uh, floor. Um, you know, project is just what it is, a project. It's an experiment. And they had an experiment, like I said in the video, the Vulture City video, <laughs> oh, yeah. we're wrecked. Uh, and they put them in a building and they multiplied and began to kill each other. It was a project because what you're going to do with the bl black problem after you freed uh, all these millions of slaves, what you going to do with them? So uh. this was one of the solutions that the government came up with for Chicago by creating the Robert Taylor projects, Stateway gardens and all of these low income properties. Uh, so Robert Taylor was the one I grew up in. Uh, it was the biggest project. It was uh, terrible, bro. I mean, everything known to man was happening in the projects. Uh, that was disgusting, terrible, and heartbreaking. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> under such type of pressure, certain diamonds are created, uh, certain jewels, certain gifts, certain abilities. You know, uh, so a lot of good came out of Robert Taylor, even though it was a hell of a lot of bad. Yeah. Now, we know that's where D.A. Smart comes from. Are there any other recognizable names out of Chicago that we would uh, know that came out of uh, Robert Taylor projects? Yeah. Ho Corey Holcomb, the comedian. Yeah. Um, one of the funniest people in the world. Hey, man. Crazy funny. Um uh, that's somebody now, you know, I know a lot of old school rappers that you probably don't know that I can name that came out of Robert Taylor, but you know, myself, Corey Holcomb, uh, a couple of other people, uh, Herbie Hancock. Okay. Uh, uh you know, a couple other people. Okay, okay. Not a lot of thought. Of. What was your upbringing like? Just in general, well, mom and dad around? No, okay. uh, single family home. I had uh, one older sister and two brothers, uh, single mother uh, that raised us part time in Algier Gardens. And then when I was five, we moved to Robert Taylor. Um, so them both are CHA or Chicago Housing Authority, uh, low income properties, uh, you know, went to public school, um, I didn't finish. Uh, there was a lot of gangs, a lot of drugs, a lot of murdering, uh, pimps, whores, uh, you know, hmm. probably how it is in L.A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Same thing. It's just um, now we have our Crips out here. We have our Bloods. We have our Mexican gangs. Can you give us an idea of some of the gangs that we might run across in Chicago? And I know you mentioned damn near every gang on that uh, song Walk With Me, which is dope as hell. But, um, yeah, can you give us an idea? Yeah, man. Uh, uh, we got our gangster disciples, and we got our vice lords, and we definitely have our Mexican gangs out here, too. Same disciples, Amores. We got a lot of Mexican gangs. <laughs> uh, the Mexicans probably game bang harder than we do. But, uh, you know, I only know from my side. Uh, so that's that's why that's the story I tell and talk about. I was always, like I said on the video, a positive aspect of the hood because, you know, just as a shorty growing up, looking out the window, watching what was going down, I just always felt, Arnold, that it was always something. It had to be something better for us. This can't be 
you know, what we born to live and die in, you know, it got to be something else. And so my mind went outside of the projects. I didn't stay there mentally, even though I was there physically. You can even tell that from the, uh, the video that I came across, which just caught my attention right away and your whole spirit. Like, like you mentioned, you can witness the positivity and, and I could tell that you got the respect, even though you weren't, um, you know, out there doing, doing what some of the people on the video were doing. You even told one dude, one, one young man to get that gang banging shit out of here. This is my soldier. We starting a little organization over here called boy B O I. It's called boys of Islam. You know, just for an example, you know, I'm teaching them knowledge of self, knowledge of others. And, and knowledge of, get your little game banging ass on. And knowledge of other people. I thought that was right. a great part of the video. Um, a, lot, a lot of those guys, um, do, you, do you still keep in contact with anybody from that video? Absolutely. Uh, you know, even though the projects are torn down, uh, we still have, like, every summer, we have, on the weekends, they have, like, barbecues over there where the projects used to be. So people come back and, you know. Oh, that's uh, up. catch up. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know? Uh, but yeah, I had a lot of respect because, you know, I was a soldier for them. Really. Uh, I was a soldier for them. I stood up for us. You know, I stood up against the police. I trained our children. You, as you can see in the video, I was training the soldiers. Yeah. I love that. Who's part the original too. man. Who's the original man? The original man is the Asia, the black man, the maker, the only, the cream of the planet of God of the universe. Yeah, you know what I'm Asia, talking about? So, the man. Whew. I, Absolutely. So I was training their children, you know, who they were, all right, and how to be better black men and not be the rigmarole and go down the same road your father did or your mother did, you know. So I had a lot of respect in the hood from that. And not only that, uh, I rap, you know, so I was known from that. Uh, I was known from that. I was known from tearing down talent shows, uh, winning contests, uh, you know, bringing uh shows to robert taylor uh you know so i was known from there so people really did respect me in the hood it wasn't no disrespect and uh yeah it was love i like that man let's talk about hip-hop mm -hmm. a little bit who, who are some of the artists you you uh grew up listening to oh man you know ll cool j krs1 public enemy uh you know rapper rock him People like that, East Coast, Taylor Rock, Just Ice, <laughs> you know, MC Shan, you know, yeah. rappers like that, old school, 80s, uh, and early 90s coming up. Uh, I was really influenced by uh, KRS-One a lot because he dropped knowledge. And, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to convey uh, something that will be instrumental in helping a black man get up. And uh, when I heard him and how he did it, it gave me definition. Him, public enemy, uh, you know, and the rest that I mentioned. I was a B-boy, but I also wanted to, uh, you know, disseminate the message to my people because of the situation that I grew up in. I didn't want to stay there. And I didn't want them to stay there either. Not just myself. I wanted them to get up too. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. What was the Chicago hip hop scene like when you were coming up in the late eighties, early nineties? There wasn't no hip hop scene in Chicago. Mm. It was, it was, uh, it was dead. It wasn't nothing but a house R and B, uh, ruled city. Uh, in order to find hip hop, you had to go to this college station, uh, radio station that had about a hundred watts of power. <laughs> so you could barely hear it. Wow. You could barely get it. It was just staticky all the time. Yo, we're bringing the noise. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but sometimes you'll get it clear on a good night. And you could bang that thing. So, uh, it was called WHBK. Um, uh, I got, uh, hip to hip hop, listening to that through my friend who brought me into music. His name was Marshawn Reed or MC Rock. Uh, I used to be a break dancer before I was in hip hop. You know, when I went to school at Beethoven Elementary, uh, as a young boy, uh, my teacher asked me to be in the play. 
uh, the Black History play, and I was Martin Luther King. Uh, After I was Martin Luther King, I knew I was going to be on the stage. So it took phases. Martin Luther King, then he went to breakdancing, Michael Jackson, back to breakdancing, into uh, rapping. And, um, you know, like at 12, I was a rapper. I was an MC. I was battling all the big rappers in my neighborhood, Top Dog, Double C, people like that, that was going to the clubs, winning contests. You know, even though it was an R&B contest, they were rapping, freestyling, and woo the crowd so good that they would win. So, you know, I just couldn't wait to get of age so I could be a part of that. But by the time I got of age, that was over with. <laughs> so it really face. wasn't a scene. Yeah. yeah, it really wasn't a hip hop scene. You know, uh, I found some little kids <laughs> that was going up to the little radio station and uh, joined in with them. And they was called the Shy Rock Nation. It was just a few hip hoppers in Chicago that tried to, you know, preserve what hip hop was for us here in Chicago. Uh, you know, but it really wasn't a hip hop scene. It was a house scene more than anything in Chicago. Okay. I remember specifically the first song I heard from a Chicago artist on LA radio that they played. I'm the Mr. Tongue Twister. I'm the Tiggity Tongue Twister. Twister, obviously. Um, I remember when I first heard him speeding up mob and Crucial Conflict was another one that really put Chicago on the map. Mm. Yeah, I used to fuck with Crucial Conflict heavy. They just popped up in my head right now, but I used to really... You I heard Twister first? Dog, Twist. We we were bumping Twister back in uh, 89. I think 89 was when Whoa. that song came out. 90, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Tongue Twister. Mr. Tongue Twister. I'm going to my funky yeah, style. Yes, I'm going to be singing that funky style. Yes, yeah. he had the cadence and everything. And I have it on tape to this day. And, and they wouldn't play it on a rotation. They played it in like mix shows and at like 11 p.m. or some shit. But wow. yeah, I remember hearing that like, who is this guy? And, and shit to this day. Then, then I found that him and the, the, the Adrenaline Rush album. Yeah, Adrenaline Rush. Oh my God, dog. <laughs> To this right. day, I bumped that shit. But yeah, man, Common was another one. But when do you remember, like, okay, right? I would, I would think you would hear Common. Yeah, first. nah, like, we heard Common came out. Yeah, Common was a. I I used to love her. I I think that was a. Wasn't that after Twist? I could be wrong. But well, um, he, that was probably on his second album. Okay. His first album was named Common. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Can I borrow a dollar? That's right. That was his That's first right. album. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was another one that yeah. was dope as hell, man. And 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 I was just like, okay, Chicago has some some shit going on there. When when do you remember cuz I remember when I'm from Long Beach, California, and I remember how excited I, I felt to hear Snoop Dogg say Long Beach on a record. You know, when you're 12, 13 <laughs> years old, that shit is just the world, you know what I mean? Um, when do you remember like hearing some shit like, "Damn, did he just say Chicago?" or that's that's some Chicago slang or like when do you remember saying, "Oh shit, Chicago, they're playing Chicago artists on the radio?" Well, I knew Common. I knew Twister. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like coming up, going to uh, talent shows and the Regal Theater and things like that. I seen them perform. We knew each other. R. Kelly. All of us knew each other. So when Common got the deal, that was big news. You feel me? Like, oh, man, Common got a record deal. Like, we, we didn't have no record companies here in Chicago. So in order to get a record deal, you had to go to New York or L.A. So Common got a deal, then Twister got a deal. Um, yeah, and they was trying to put their records out. So I was super proud of Common. He did videos. He was, like, national, you know. Twister was, like, trying to get national, but they, they didn't show him the love that I thought he deserved back then. Um, but he kept pushing and, and that's what I'm proud of. That's he, he became who he is now today. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the reason, uh, well, one of the reasons why I'm not on that list is because, uh, you know, when I was presented some record deals from Motown, Columbia, Jive, all these different, uh, companies that came to me and I read what, they wanted me to sign. I didn't agree. Hell. You know what I'm talking about? I didn't agree with, okay, you're going to pay me to, you're going to give me an advance that I'm going to owe you. And you right? still get to own my shit at the end of the day. Nope. And then you're going to give me uh, 1% of a penny <laughs> off <laughs> my no, record sales. Right. So I was like, 
that's not even a deal. That's like a slave contract. And I was like 19 years old, striking contracts. They had a a boardroom full of lawyers and we was going through the contract and I'm a young boy going through the contract with them striking it. They like, man, what is this? I'm like, I could read. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's the difference. And then I remember when I was at RCA and they said, well, R. Kelly signed this contract. I was like, well, my name is not R. Kelly. (laughs) My name is D.A. Smart. And I want to, I want a relationship with you. And if the, if the relationship going to be a master slave relationship, then I don't want it. What good is it making a record for you? I don't own my image, my voice, my name, my, my face. I don't own none of my music. I create none of the lyrics. I create none of the songs. I create everything you own and I'm in debt with you for the rest of my life. So you control me. That ain't no deal. Mm-hmm. That's a slave master contract. So I never was able to get an agreement with none of these record companies because they all was offering that. So even though I was proud of my brothers, I was sad that they was in that type of deal. You know what I mean? So, and I would never sign nothing like that. And I never did. Yeah. Good call. That's you were smart back then for not doing that. Cause a lot of people living in the projects or whatever the case is in the hood or whatever, they're going to take the first thing that, that, that they think can get them out of there. But, shit they'll, they'll probably end up right back where they started once they you know don't sell what they're supposed to sell and and the label gets rid of them exactly and then you just you don't you're not really rich you just look rich they make exactly, you look rich man. you they product as long as you're selling records but when you're not uh you know they're not happy with you no more then they're gonna throw you back to where you came from yeah. i just didn't want to be that type of person i didn't want to be in that type of deal i felt like a deal should be okay I'm the talent. You got the ability to put me all over the world. Let's make a deal. 30, yeah. 70, yeah. you know, or 50, you know, 60, 40. Come on, let's go. Yeah, not uh, no you know, 5.95. That shit ain't happening. Shit, not no percentage of a penny uh, to three years of in debt from your 1.5 million advance. You know what I'm talking about? And whatever else you do, promotional tour, videos, you understand what I'm talking about? That's crazy. I'll never get out of debt. And then you talk about the second album, you're going to double it. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't understand the game until I was listening to a radio interview and I heard TLC break it down. TLC, mm. who sold 40 million, whatever, how many ever crazy millions of things? Wow. Sold, and they just broke it down how they were broke at the wow. time. And, and I was just like, oh, how my is God. that possible? Exactly. How is that possible? They went diamond. Dog. What the fuck? They went diamond. <laughs> They and they were broke. driving around in Kias, like they were literally driving around in, in eleven thousand dollar cars. You know what I mean? And exactly dying to their name, homie. Exactly. I didn't want to be that. That don't make sense. Yeah. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. Damn. It didn't make sense to me then, and it don't make sense to me now. Yeah. And now with these three sixty deals and all that, they literally own you. Like they own you. You know, back in the day, you could get your tour money at least and survive off that. Shit, now they're getting your tour money, dog. Yeah, it's, that's a 360 deal. Yeah, man. They got you. They want all your money. I'm good. Yep, yep. You know, before I'm anything, I'm a man. You know, and I, I'm thankful that I had a, a father figure to look up to by the name of Jeffrey Watts, Dr. Groove, who used to go and sit down with me and teach me the skills of negotiating. Uh, he used to teach me how to read contracts because this is the business I was in. He was like my personal manager. And so when I actually got in front of them, I was really armed with that already. So I was ready to shoot my guns at them unless they came correct. And they weren't coming correct at all. They weren't, that, that ain't the game for them to come correct. Hell no. Nah. No, it ain't. Yeah, damn. And they're sitting there like, who is this motherfucker thinking he knows shit? And meanwhile, you do know exactly. shit. Exactly. <laughs> they're like, who is this bum from the Robert Taylor exactly. sitting here with a pen striking our motherfucking contract <laughs> in front of us? They didn't understand that. they like, man, do you know that's 1.5 million? I'm like, don't you know that shit don't belong to me if it's if we go by what this contract say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That don't make sense to me. That ain't that ain't my money. Okay, you give me one point five million, then put my record out, and then I and we go from there. All right, that's a deal. <laughs> yeah, this ain't a deal. I gotta take this and pay everybody with that money and owe you. Nah, it's stupid. Ain't happening, man. Ain't happening. 
You know, let's yeah, keep it on. Um, let's keep it on the hip hop. I would love to know your thoughts on a controversial artist. My opinion, my opinion, one of the best to do it. I don't want to be biased and bias anyone's decision out there. But um, Kanye West is from Chicago. Um, what were your thoughts okay. when you kind of saw his come up and 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 how he is to where he is today? What are your whole thoughts on Kanye? Damn, when I first heard that first album, I was like, wow. I couldn't believe they let him say some of the shit that he said on there. I was like, oh, okay. This is dope. This is one of the dopest albums I ever heard yeah. coming from Chicago. Uh, you know, and, you know, he's saying some of the type of things that I would want to say, you know, but not as harsh as me. But that's cool. That's good enough. You know, I loved Kanye album. I loved everything. My man throughout, I was really proud and was uh, excited to see what was going to happen in Chicago when Kanye first came out. How did you feel? Did you get a chance to watch that documentary on Netflix? Yes, I did. I checked it out. Absolutely. Yeah, that made me yep. fall in love with them all over again, man. Like, uh, real talk, dog. <laughs> I, I mean. swear. I swear. You know, I didn't know him coming up in Chicago. I yeah. never met Kanye. Uh, I didn't know him in the streets. None of that. I didn't know him. I didn't know him until he blew up. And uh, I didn't know about him until he blew up. I heard he was making beats with uh, with my man that passed away. I can't call his name right now, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it was a song that him and my man, Payroll was his name. Payroll, he passed away. Payroll did it, and Kanye did a song that Kanye gave to Jay-Z. Okay. They kept the same hook. And all that. I think it's a uh, change. The name of the song was change. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he just took payroll lyrics off and put Jay-Z on there basically. But yeah. So that's when I heard about Kanye when they was beefing over that, you know, stuff like that. But I was, uh, you know, I didn't know him coming up in the, in the shy, but knowing that he was from the shy and listening to his uh, his music, I was totally impressed. Dope. Yeah, yeah. You know, where in relation to where you grew up, did, did Kanye grow up? I'm just curious, like, because I'm, I'm trying to map Chicago in my head. Maybe you can even explain, like, the different sides for us, you know, for being from L.A. Uh, well, it's like I grew up in Compton. And Kanye grew up in the valley. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. That's the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was from the suburbs.